Yeah, you know, look, Jindrak being in the group was for the same reasons that Batista ended up in the group. The only difference was is the feeling amongst everyone in the group, but also everyone else was who had it, who truly had the potential to be the next big thing. And I think that in each opportunity, Mark didn't really display that. I don't know that Mark had the killer instinct in him. And they did. It was it was also a matter of how those guys worked together. David worked with Rick before, so there was already a bond there. And I think that Mark was kind of the, the odd man out that didn't really seem to fit. They fit. So it was it was quickly changed. And I think that it was also one of those situations. They're out shooting vignettes. How do guys gel? Yes. And if you don't gel, it isn't going to work. And I don't think that uh, Mark really gelled with the other three. And Dave immediately did. So a decision like this, based on gelling, it's going to be more about, maybe perhaps less about, you know, Vince's input and more about the gel of the guys. Like, do you think Hunter comes back and says, Hey man, Batista's the guy. I think they all did. Yeah. I think, but it was also, you know, you've got producers and guys that are out on the road working with these talents each and every day. Yeah. And they had the, you know, they had the interaction with them on a daily basis. So they could tell you what was working and what wasn't working. Hey, this will be good. This won't. And I don't know that, um, man, you know, in the beginning, we had high hopes for Mark Jindrak and Sean O'Hare. I don't think you would have been, been able to find a bigger proponent of Sean O'Hare than myself. But, you know, once we got there, it was like, oh, fuck, man. You know, relax, dude. Listen, um, great look, great skills. Didn't know how to put it together. And I, I dare say the same thing about Jindrak. He was, Mark was probably too nice for the spot. And you got to have some asshole in you.